Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzgazad video called What if Earth got kicked out of the solar system and became a rogue planet? Let's take a look. The night sky seems peaceful and orderly. But in reality, stars are careening through the galaxy at speeds of hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. Not bound by static formations, but changing neighborhoods constantly. Fortunately, space is big, and so the stars of the Milky Way are very unlikely to hit us. Unfortunately, they don't have to hit anything to make us have a really bad time on Earth. And there are already stars starting to get very close. To understand how dangerous stars are to us, we need to talk about gravity. Gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe. You are attracted by an atom a million light years away and vice versa. Luckily, this force gets weaker over distance, and it also depends on how massive something is. So things that are close at... Specifically, you double the distance, it gets four times weaker. ...are very massive, are more attractive, winning the cosmic tug of war. This way, massive things define how smaller things behave around them. The sun makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, and so it shapes the behavior and orbits of everything else in it. Billions of years ago, after the sun was born, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place as the planets were formed from countless little pieces that collided constantly. But over the eons, a stable balance emerged. Today, most planets and asteroids have settled into safe and predictable orbits. We have the inner and outer planets, the asteroid and Kuiper belt, and at the edge, the Oort cloud, a giant sphere of comets orbiting slowly in cold storage. We really don't want this balance to be disturbed. If another star came too close to us, its gravity would pull on everything in the solar system like a spoiled toddler, messing up the pleasant <laughs> order of the planets and asteroids and comets. This isn't some imaginary danger. Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf, brown dwarf binary system passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. It might even have sent a deadly onslaught of asteroids our way. But it could take two million years until those visitors from the Oort cloud arrive in the inner solar system. But there's a much bigger problem on the horizon. <laughs> You've just chilled, that's fine, it'll be a while. <laughs> Gliese 710, a red dwarf with about half the mass of the sun, is currently headed towards the solar system. In about a million years, it'll pass through the Oort cloud and become the brightest star in the night sky. Hmm. A close flyby like this would unfold over hundreds of thousands of years, disrupting the orbits of millions of objects in the Oort cloud considerably. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early solar system the night sky could be filled with comets and asteroids raining down on the inner solar system. The larger ones could cause dinosaur-level mass extinctions and would be bad for the stock market. But it could get much worse. The galaxy is... I think a million years from now, assuming our technology keeps evolving like it has, dealing with little rogue asteroids from a rogue star shouldn't be that big of a deal. You never know. An intense place and stars get close to each other regularly. So it is possible that a star could come much closer and not just pass us, but fly directly through the inner solar system. This would be very bad in the extreme. Yeah. The chance of another star colliding with the sun is astronomically unlikely, but that isn't what we're worried about. If another star were to pass by about as close as the Earth is from the sun, it could easily eject the Earth from the solar system. The odds of such an event are estimated to be around 1 in 100 thousand. Plus, depending on the luminosity of said star, it could overheat the Earth. <laughs> and it depends kind of where it passes relative, but that, yeah, that could, that could also be a problem. <laughs> in the next 5 billion years. Small, but not absurdly so. 
as we discussed in actually those odds are fairly high um the way we manage risk at a nuclear power plant, um, a one in one million chance is actually considered a high unacceptable risk threshold. Medium being, I forget the exact numbers, but like one in, one in 10 million to like one in 100 million is where the numbers become more and more acceptable. So if this was, if the nuclear industry managed how we manage the risk of rogue stars, we would actually plan for this and consider this risk unacceptably high, especially because we're talking an extinction level event. So, interesting. Another video, there seem to be billions of rogue planets doing their own thing in the galaxy, and this is one way to make them. So if this were to happen with an average red dwarf, what would happen on Earth? Kicking Earth out of the solar system. As the star enters the solar system, a small orangish dot appears in the sky that grows bigger and bigger for months, eventually becoming visible during the day. It would get bigger and much brighter than the moon. Too bright to look at directly. Yeah, the night sky would be filled with an eerie red glow. After a few months, it would start shrinking again. But so would the sun. Over a few years, the sun slowly grows smaller in the sky and with it warmth and light start to dissipate. All around the world, as the days turn dark, the final winter of humanity. That's spooky, you get your second sun, it's gonna heat up the air, they kinda neglect that portion of it. And then, so it gets really hot and then it's gonna get really cold. Hmm. Begin. The polar ice caps begin to grow and spread while plants shrivel and die. Forests freeze, and animals die in droves. As the Earth passes the orbit of Mars, the average surface temperature has plummeted to near minus 50 degrees Celsius. From space, Earth begins to look like an icy moon, the blue-green surface becoming the pale gray-white of death. As global infrastructure breaks down, people huddle together indoors, burning what they can for warmth as the temperature continues to drop, counting the days until they'll be out of food which no longer grows. Everybody living at the surface is living on borrowed time. You're gonna have to go underground and get closer to the core. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, surface temperatures sink to minus 150 degrees Celsius, lower than the coldest ever recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Needless to say, by now, almost everyone is dead. Without the energy from sunlight to evaporate water, clouds don't form and the water cycle stops. The polar ice caps eventually touch at the equator and the oceans become covered in a thick layer of ice. As more and more of its heat leaks out, more water freezes onto the bottom of the ice sheet. The concentration of salt in the deep ocean grows, poisoning most animals that survived here. Really push it down. Although around hydrothermal vents, communities of extremophiles might adapt even to these circumstances. <laughs> Deep below the surface, some bacteria would not notice much of any of this as they're still kept warm by the radioactive decay of elements in the Earth's core. Some people think this is what's going on on Europa. There's actually an interesting movie about that. As the Earth reaches the orbit of Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun is still the brightest star in the sky, but it's one among many, with stars now visible during the day. The temperature is now barely 40 degrees Celsius above absolute zero, below the freezing temperature of the gases in the atmosphere. A weird spectacle, enjoyed by no one unfortunately, unfolds as the atmosphere turns into nitrogen and then oxygen snow. Over well, a few yeah. years, <laughs> it's deposited into an icy 10 meter thick sheet all over the wow. planet's surface, with only a thin whisper of gas remaining. The frozen corpses of flora and fauna are buried beneath them. As Earth leaves the solar system, it becomes a rogue planet, traveling alone through the dark, lifeless and in solitude. But weirdly enough, there is hope. Humanity would not be surprised by this potential extinction event. We'd notice it thousands of years in advance. There's not a lot we could do to stop a star, but we could prepare. Most of us would perish, but a few million could survive in Make a stellar engine, <laughs> like in that other video they made. <laughs> huge artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy, possibly even fusion if we can learn to use the ice around us for power. Here, humanity might survive for hundreds of thousands of years. 
At some point, we would become used to our circumstances and new generations would watch documentaries in disbelief about the time we had our own star and could walk the... That's an interesting point. It'd be just like the um, Mastriowska brain, except with a smaller population. You just... People can live in, like, virtual reality powered by geothermal uh, nu or nuclear power plants underground. And... They could be thinking that they're on a uh, planet that's just like ours, ours is right now. Just make a simulated reality out of it. Surface of Earth. And at some point, we might decide to look for another home. If the Earth were lucky enough to pass by another star with a habitable planet, we could try to make a fresh start. Space flight, oddly enough, would become very easy without the atmosphere in the way. So it's not unthinkable that the last survivors would leave Earth behind and try again on a new planet around a new star. Maybe one day, thousands of years later, the descendants of humanity will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. Stories... Earth in and of itself is basically like the mothership sending off a bunch of spaceships to other planets as it passes through other systems. That's fascinating. ...of our lost home of a mysterious icy planet floating alone and empty through the dark of space. So basically, the key to humanity's survival is learning about what we'll be dealing with. Well, we'd better get cracking then. Our friends from brilliant other... Oh, here, yeah. I figured they were segueing to the sponsors. I wonder if it'd also be possible for the Earth to get captured by another star and then just gradually heat back up and the process repeats itself. That sort of stuff's fascinating. Hmm. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.